is no place to escape to. This is the last podcast. On the left. <laughs> Side stories? That's when the cannibalism started. Side stories. Yes. Then I'll go our separate ways. Jody Sweden's got big teeth. Whoa! I was I was expecting. I was expecting yeah, I, not I, expecting I, as soon as you said it, teeth, not, not, I was yeah. expecting the rest yeah. of the word to be different because I'm classy. Yeah. Wow. I looked at this, and wow. the first thing I noticed, honestly, it's kind of rude. I hey, <laughs> I first thing I noticed, it's that she has very large fake. Teeth. It's are veneers, you sure they're man. fake? Veneers always are. There, she's got the choppers on. She's them. got big teeth. I know it's partially because I know that she went through a little bit of a drug issue. Mm-hmm. So you got to clean them up. She had an addiction thing, so they have to go. It's kind of like when they, if there's some dentists that always got to huck fin the mouth. Yeah. Do you yeah, know what I mean? They got to go. It, yeah. You gotta paint it all white. Yeah. Got to put they it put back on up. Their coveralls. New I, rafters. I have it on good authority. That she's a wonderful person. I've heard the same. Yes. I'm just, I just said I'm nothing. I'm just saying, I'm just letting, you, you made fun of her teeth. I said no, no. You and put the qualifier. here. You put the qualifier of made fun. I just said. Oh, so you like big teeth on a person. I do. On a horse. No. She <laughs> said that. That's Jackie Zabrowski. Here's the thing. Jody- she said that. And yeah, we might sound similar, but she said that. I think that Jody Sweeten's very beautiful. I think that she it's actually beautiful. extremely. She's gorgeous. I think it's extremely feminist of me. That the first thing I noticed were her big honking, swinging teeth. I'm always thinking about that. She had big teeth as a kid. I don't know if they're fake. No, those are, yes, of course they're fake. Those are fake teeth. Those are child's teeth. That's a children's mouth. Yeah, that's pre-braces right there. Yeah, no, no, they don't look great. She's got big. As a child, now they look great. Awesome, supple, beautiful. She got a pair of nice teeth. Also, Jody, huge Sweet. pair of great, <laughs> great teeth. teeth. She also <laughs> always stands up to Candace Cameron Bure. And oh, wait, just that's where this came from. Yes, they're still friends. That's, and a, I that's like what's it. so cool about I know, it. That's, I love it. Well, yeah. we're already in page seven territory, Sorry. aren't we? No, I, no, I, no, I started I like us. it. I like it. That's I started a good way to go in. I'm setting the tempo. Hi, welcome to Side Stories. You hear a little. <laughs> you hear a little noise. I don't. I mean, you meant to. I just got veins. I got bad veins. Oh, why are you bringing up my bad veins right yeah, yeah. now? It's your fucking it's asshole, brother. It's a condition. I got bad veins. They had to be stripped from my legs. Yeah. Hey, they got those sound like those veins. They got fired. You'd be horrible. You fired at heroin. Man, I would be. Actually, technically, I'd be very good at heroin because I could Big, just find. Yeah, they're, they're already popping. I don't even need to, like, squeeze them up. I meant she, as, like, a superhero. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, very bad heroin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She's well, not yeah. brave. No one is looking to me for help. But I'm here. <laughs> my do. name is Henry Zabrowski. I'm sitting here with my sister, Jackie Zabrowski. She's our special guest. I should have done you first, Eddie. I don't give a fuck. Jackie ladies first. She's oh, wonderful. Thank you. Right. So I'm happy to see you here, Jackie. Thank you. It's nice to be here, guys. It's yes. nice to have thank you, you for joining. be seen here. I'm sad, but also happy that there's no pudding involved in this, but it is weird to I be love, sitting next to you. I think Good no Put's the funniest show on the network, by the way. Wow. Personal that. opinion. Is He's my on Side show. Stories and Last Podcast on the And Brighter Side. Don't forget and about my other show. And, and Hoopa Goo Goo Game. Good puts the funniest show. I I, well, I sit there and thanks. I cackle, I laugh. You I don't get care. anything extra. I'm being nice. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Henry. I'm Try sitting here. it once in your life. I'm sitting here <laughs> with the weakened Ed Larson showing the weakest emotion, which is being nice. Is that true? I don't know. I'll fucking kick your ass. <laughs> That's how I do like it, it, Eddie. Do it. See, I'll, be, I like oh, this. I'll be right behind you. I like this energy. You. This yes. is, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Beat him up, Eddie. See, that's all I do. I'm like a conductor. <laughs> As the head of this show. You, you broke me. I play you both <laughs> like instruments. Oh, yes. You are the piccolo. Yeah, yeah. And Eddie's my big trombone. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Same yeah. Noise. We know instruments. Now, guys, today, the reason why I had Jackie here, and it's not just because it feels like I have to. And because I'm the more beautiful one, but you have, again, the bigger tits. We're trying mm-hmm. to bring women on to side stories, and this is the, the bridge. The only it's one the best we know. you could get, yeah. This yeah. is the bridge to women. Yeah. Now, this to show you we're safe. I'm pretty sure time. the wives wouldn't do it. Well, it's just the, how long, <laughs> how much more of the show do they need to receive? Um, but today, the reason why we have Jackie here is because we wanted to talk, because 
I got a couple of requests because you know it's our summer break. Mm -hmm. We got a couple of requests of a straight up movie review episode. Okay. Because like Eddie and I, we watch a lot of movies, and I only know one other person that watches as many films more as me. Yes, <gasps> is Jackie Zabrowski. <gasps> yeah, with her whose bond. Jeff Adams. Yes. Mm. They, AMC Stubbs represent. We're all Stubbs family. Stubbs, Stubbs, Stubbs represent. Yeah. Yeah. We're all Stubbs Dude, family. so Stubby. But I do think that each one of us, I do find it interesting that each one of our wives refuses to join Stubbs. Julie's on Stubbs. Your wife is the only one we have to buy tickets for. She holds out. <laughs> and I don't know why she why won't join. Why does It's why she's never I invited to I have to use to all movies. my $5 points whenever she comes to the movies. That's what I do as well. It's, it's eating me out of points Home. Oh, it's eating you out of points, huh? Sounds pretty great. Hell yeah. You're disgusting. No, I'm sorry. I'm no sexual great. on this. I'm no not sexual. sexual. Today you we are. Sexual. I think well, that. Okay. No, please don't. Uh, please let don't. me slide right in. I, I'm like 25% of the show, so a quarter of the time you could be sexual. All okay. right. Well, that's very interesting. Okay. I know percentages. <laughs> so we want to talk about movies because we love movies. Mm -hmm. We're interested in. I think. I feel that we hold the torch. For many people that are into horror films, especially independent horror films, it seems like this is the perfect time for it. And the summertime is my favorite time to watch horror movies, even more so yes. than the Halloween season. Yes, Summerween, yeah. baby. I love it in during this because you know what? Because they slide right in there under the radar all the time, all mm -hmm. the time. And they're they a lot of times they are summer movie fair, which I do love. I also think on Halloween, it's one of those where I think that we're on the clock. On Halloween. You've got to yeah. get them in. We're spooky people. Yes. I've never done 30. Well, I did 31 for 31, we're doing this year. Oh, I've we never do done 30. Oh, man. We do the 31 for 31 every year, and mm. it's just such a it's such a race to the end. Can we put the Saw franchise in? Because I've never seen any of them. Love, you should. You should, because they're funny. They, they range in quality from shit. To not so shit. Highly recommend every year adding in a franchise. We always into your do. 31 for 31. It really, yeah. it, it's changed the game. We always choose one franchise and we watch it from nuts to ass. Mm -hmm. where we Although go, with Leprechaun was a choice. Well, Leprechaun, Leprechaun I'm more excited for than Saw. Saw looks so bad to me. You know what you'd yeah, like about Saw? Bad. I feel like the first one is a very genuine torture film, torture yes. porn film. Always. And he's great mm. in it. Yes. It's a great movie. But the lord that gets built i feel like honestly and morgan the, freeman's in it too right no that's uh you're thinking of the bone collector wow that's, i believe you're no, thinking Denzel's of in the bone collector oh god george uh -oh. what is he in no morgan freeman doesn't do that many horror films yeah, he did Dream Catcher. He did the, the Ritual Killer. The yeah, he's not in any last of year. Yeah, yeah, he's not in any of these films. Killer. Kiss the Girls. Um, Kiss the Girls again, ancient film. N and also, yeah. that's not a horror movie. No, it's a hit horror. It's a thriller. This also, is the one thing you have to very understand. Very big difference between thrillers and horror. Distinctly, a massive difference. But between sometimes they're and horror. they're cousins or buddies. Oh yeah, yes, for sure. It could be a horror bad. and a thriller. Long legs. Yes. I don't know was was Long Legs a horror film? It is a thriller. It's supernatural. I think it's more of a thriller. Yeah. Well, now we know that it's supernatural. I'm just gonna say this straight up. There's gonna be a couple of little spoilers. There's gonna be little spoilers. People already Nothing got mad crazy. slightly with our Long Legs coverage because I forgot to put on my Long Legs. Wait, are you talking you have to about put your arms over? Your are you head. talking about the movie with Hunter Schaefer Cuckoo? Cuckoo. 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 That, a different that cuckoo. movie is also coming out I'm, this I'm year. I'm excited for that. Cuckoo. 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 No, Cuckoo. we're talking about. Cuckoo. Is that what you're doing? That's Long Legs. Cuckoo. You've seen Long Legs. I've seen Long Legs. You don't remember the scene when he does the cuckoo hand motion? No, I was remembering another scene, but I'm trying not to spoil it. You pee pee? Yeah, I'm pee peed in my body. <laughs> but the reason why you'd like Saw is that I think you'd like it, the lore that gets built out. Mm -hmm. Saw 2, in my opinion, is the weakest of the entire franchise oh because it's the worst of them. And then it's like, you would say. The movie Seven. Seven, that's seven what is what. Of. Yes. That's what you were thinking. Uh, yes, you were Morgan thinking Freeman. Seven. I mean, Seven, well, I know Seven. I wasn't thinking of Seven. I, I think thought, he was um, thinking of Kiss the Girls for some reason. Mmm. Because honestly, I feel like those movies in that time period stand out in our brains because of going to Blockbuster and going to Hollywood Video. Like, I feel like yes. I remember the VHSs. I bring up The Dentist 2 all Glover. the time. 
And Saul. Yes. And Saul. Does that make yes. me a bad man? No. No. I think it's okay. They're it's all allowed. Old. There's yeah. a lot of them. They're yeah. just old. Yeah. It was Danny Glover, not Morgan Freeman. Hey, and Saul. I'm glad we cleared it up. All right, Thank but you, you should try it. But let's you what you were saying is true. Who directed Saw 2? Was it James 2? Cameron Boogaloo? It had to be, right? Because the first Saw was directed by who? James 1. Yeah. And the second one? <laughs> Eddie com. See, that provides a good transition. Is that what happens here? It's yes. A, uh, this kind of humor? Here? Sometimes. All right, sometimes. I like sometimes it. Sometimes we yeah. allow it. Sometimes it stands. Sometimes it's struck from the record. 25% sexuality. I yes. I don't listen, so I don't know what jokes are cut. <laughs> hey, hey, that's how you keep yourself safe. <laughs> yes. But what I wanted to do today was... Because there is a lot of new films out there. We talked about some old films, but like the, uh, my favorite time period to watch horror movies is when everybody else is not watching them. I do think it is interesting when we went to go see in Long the Legs. Yes, but I'm talking the summertime versus Halloween. Like oh, okay. I like doing it the rest of the year. When we went to Long Legs, we were the only ones laughing. Oh yeah, it was well, it was very funny. And I will say though, for why me, do people laugh more at horror films? Oh, I, I laugh they, as as I'm excited. Me too. too. Yes. Like more than it's not even I find it funny. I laugh because it's like wild. Especially yeah. good kills. Like there are certain kills that I got to celebrate while watching it in the theater. It's one mm -hmm. of my favorite parts about going to the movie theater. Not a horror film, but I did just go see Deadpool and Wolverine. I saw and it too. While I don't care, it's fun to see it in a big theater filled with people because everyone's woohooing, yeah. not like the Sims. Great Movies kills. are meant for the goddamn theater. And I mean it. They're meant for the theater. You're not supposed to be watching them on your phone. If you're watching them on your phone, what are we doing here? All right? I get angry. Me and David Lynch. All right? I will fight back to back. Robin style. I will be the gay Robin. Reality to David television Lynch. is meant for your phone. Yes. And and YouTube videos. And, yeah. and us. Yes. We are sure. meant for your phone. Not a big time film. It makes me crazy when you see, watch somebody watch an old film. There's so much work. I feel like that's also the binge model in general that has sort of fucked with the artist's and audience's relationship, which is just this concept of media is meant to be consumed as fast and as large of a pile as possible, and that makes you sort of forget the how many hundreds and thousands of hours of expertise go into making these things, mm -hmm. and so eventually Eventually, you're just like, more stuff, more stuff. Well, that's yeah. why I think 80s and 90s horror movies, yes, they were great, but I think they're more romanticized because we rewatched them a hundred times. Well, also sure. think about how at the time period, Jurassic Park was viewed as like summer schlock. Now we know that that movie is a classic of American cinema. But I don't it, know. It was pretty huge when it came out. It was, but it was viewed as like there were Oscar movies right. and there were blockbusters. It was nominated for Oscars. But, but do you, uh, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, do you know what I'm saying? I think Jurassic Park too, but I think you can't talk bad about Jurassic Park 1 I'm like not, that. Eddie, People I'm not, knew that how good it was. Is, I knew he's immediately he's got emotional. He's very upset. I'm so scared Jurassic of him. Jurassic Park 1 is a very good movie. It's and a very good movie, it. but I'm not it's not shitting on it. it wasn't, I'm not shitting. I think it at the time, it wasn't. But I'm it wasn't just, branded as one. I'm just saying <laughs> the concept of there used to be, those were considered to be dumb shit genre films like even the yes those were a big deal but they were not considered the big important fancy ass movies that were on oscar caliber and the dramas and the tiny like little drawing rooms you remember with the piano used to like win all the oscars that shitty holly hunter movie yeah where she's the, deaf oh yeah or whatever she's something well she's you know sad. that jurassic park came out the same year as schindler's list i know so he he ran the gamut that rough year, year. yeah well yeah. but no, great for him yeah but schindler's list was a beautiful piece of this crazy piece of telling art probably gonna go down as spielberg's best movie I don't know. Jurassic Park's pretty great. Well, eh. What about that movie about Schindler's about List his... is in his top five. I think yeah. Schindler's List, I think Jaws is better than Jurassic Park. I think Jaws is better, th is his best movie. I think Jaws is I the greatest summer horror movie that ever was. I could put it there. I'd also put Jaws somewhere in the thriller category. Thriller? It's an yeah. animal kill movie. Those are thriller. horror movies. But I view it as a, I view that more as a thriller. I think it's more of a thriller. What about like Grizzly? Do you consider that a thriller or yes. a horror yes. movie? Thriller, really? thriller, yeah. horror-based thriller, thriller, yes. What? See, to yeah. me, a true horror film is Fuck something you. like- He's very upset today. Hold on, no, but this is crazy talk. A lot of what about like, Crawl? You think Crawl's not a it's horror a thriller. movie? It's definitely a thriller. I view I, it, but that's for me. It's I view for it us. as that. It's just our opinion. In terms of animal-based movies, I think, well, it's a monster film. 
Why so angry? So upset. And it's just like, we're not If you go to big. Blockbuster Video, why? and yeah, you go to the, to where is Jaws right? going to be? What section is it going to be in? Probably I put it in the classic the films category, action adventure. It's not going to be there, though. You're going to have to keep walking around and look for it because it's in the horror section. I just, I just, I just, I just simply, I just don't understand why he's getting so... <laughs> See, I view a, a traditional <laughs> capital H horror film, something that it's certain elements... First example, In a Violent in Nature. In a Violent Nature horror film. Just finished it. Fucking awesome. It's great. <laughs> There's sequel coming. Hey, but yes. I do think that what they're, yeah, we saw that announcement in SDCC. But I think that what's interesting is what we're. it's this new thing that we're seeing in horror recently, which is the artified version of what you could call hacky genres within horror. And this could have been just a run-of-the-mill slasher film. Because slasher films... Well, is this a horror movie or an anti-fireman movie? This is a (laughs) horror film. Sometimes they are one and the same. I believe a horror film has a a fantastical edge to it that is not in reality based. Like, there's something about it that bumps it up to past drama, past thriller. I think a serial killer film largely would be considered a thriller. Long Legs teeters on the thriller horror because of the supernatural element. And Zodiac, you think, is like a thriller. thriller. That's a thriller, but also I dare say, I feel that a horror is more based on the idea of like, it's about the kills rather than about the story. The story. Okay. And that's, I really okay. think about that in that way, because like Hereditary is at its core. I think Hereditary will be labeled that one of the biggest, probably the best horror films of the two, of the 2000s. God, it's, it's probably great. the best one I've seen in the last 10 God, years. So it, good. it edges up my top 10 films of all time, yes. all the time. I watch Hereditary for fun. Yep. Yeah. I love that movie. But there is something about that movie at the very base of it is it's a horror because of the supernatural elements. But what elevates it is the fact that it's also a platinum tier drama. So you have the both. Like you mm-hmm. have this. It's like what the exorcist. Well, that's a type nails. of horror movie. Yes. Right. Is drama. Right. Or the yeah. art. Like Because then this is probably vegging into, into edging into the art horror. Where like in a violent nature takes the slasher tropes and plays it out in a very slow build but what I loved about In a Violent Nature is that it, m- much like Behind the Mask which is a great mockumentary slash yes. horror movie that needs okay. to come out which is about a basically Behind the Mask is awesome. It's a mockumentary about a Jason Voorhees type killer and his like prepare it. It's like talking with this killer. To find out how he prepares, prepares as a talk. Yes. yes. Oh. He's funny. He's like funny in it. It's closer to Man Bites Dog. No, it's no, no. He's, no. he's like no, a funny, no, no. he's like a normal guy oh, okay. that does this thing. But this story, like in a violent nature, I love that it's from the killer's perspective. Because yeah. you yes. never see it from the killer's perspective. I think perspective. he's in almost every shot of the film. Yes. And it's a, I love that it's a stunt man's movie. Yes. It's the Kane Hodder, right? Like Kane Hodder. It's like when they developed Jason Voorhees, when they developed Michael Myers, they wanted it to have dread without a lot of lines because they just had stuntmen doing it. Mm-hmm. But they learned how to do it with their bodies. It's like this, like it's a character creature acting thing that is such a niche world of fantastic performers that you never see. Like, what's his name from Pan's Labyrinth? Super skinny. I don't know. Oh, yes. The, the guy skinny guy. Yes. Eyeball hands? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eyeball hands. He's eyeball hands. He's also the fish man. Oh, he's, also he's great. In, who's that guy? Skinny guy. I don't know his name. I never learned it. Can I be honest? Is I don't he, know. You know Whoa. he's got You know he's packing. Of course. He's yeah. super all skinny. Those, all oh, those yeah. tall you skinny know guys are packing. Doug Jones. Also from Hocus Pocus. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Doug Jones does look like a long-dicked dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know Long he's packing. And thin. But you yeah. have to get rid of the, like, you know, have to, you'd have to get through the kissing of the corpse face, which I do feel that most of his fans would be definitely into. Oh, oh no. Yeah. 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 You, I don't you're think not... he has a problem getting laid. No, no, no. no, no, no. no there no, no, are no, no. many, many haunted girls that have sex with that man. Yeah, dude. Women. Oh, also, yeah. I mean, he, as a fish, he was fucking. He was, but that I still think I, not into I, gills. Not I'm not. Did I'm you a guys not fucker. like Shape of Water? I I no, I, no, I just don't want to bang Shape of Water. I just don't want to bang the fish man. I yeah. actually, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I fell asleep. You fell asleep. Well, you got to wake up. Shape of Water. Will you watch it again? I, I fell. Michael asleep. Shannon's incredible. I know. 
He is great villain in that movie, but I did unfortunately fall asleep. Fly from your grave. I'm looking at now Chris Nash, who made In a Violent Nature. This like this is a new young like this guy. He was an actor turned director. Okay. And what I so but how do we feel about this? Have you guys seen Ghost Story? With with uh, Mara, Rooney, I refuse I to watch it, it. Insanely enough, we were just talking about not that long ago watching it. I've never seen it. So my issue. So my re- he wears a sheep. I was worried it was too sad, well, and I wanted it to be scary, and I didn't want it to be sad. When I went to go see you with Natalie, Natalie and I are both. I'm both generous and deeply fucked. Rooney Mara, I'm deeply too. I make my decisions sharp and I, like a knife. I cut him off, right? If I don't like something, I shut it off. I walk out, right? If I don't like something, all right? A lot of times I don't give yeah, it a shot. Yeah, you don't let it breathe. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I go, no! Yeah. Right? And we went to go see a ghost story in the theater. And we both hated it so much, we left. So quickly, we left. It was like, a, and it, I remember the moment we left. You walked this is a out spoiler. before it was over? Yes. This is the spoiler. Is Not for left. the end, of course. No. The spoiler <laughs> is the reason why we left was the 10 minute long she eats the pie scene. And we were like... This, was it sexy? No. We all have to sit and watch this shit and act like, oh, whoa, what a shit. It's just like she had to do this shameful thing. It's because Rudy Mara hasn't had more than a quinoa salad in her stomach for fucking She's 10, hungry. 15 years. Why are you taking and this so away from we her? We all have to watch her eat this pie. We're like, oh, she's grieving. Just being like, I do that on a fucking Thursday. You eat a whole pie on a Thursday? I can. I'm, I'm proud of a you. fucking Thursday. I'm proud of you. Oh, she's, I guess that's what it was. It's about the grief of some watching from a ghost perspective, watching someone grieve. You my don't like thing, sad movies, though. But I'm getting I love more, sad movies. I'm getting sad more movies. into we sad do. movies. But my thing is, you got a ghost there, dude. Play some tricks. If there's a ghost in a film with the sheet on, you wanted him to Beetlejuice it up. He does. Sort of. <laughs> but I like in a movie. romantic way. Yes, people love the movie. I love it. A lot That's of people do like it. People it... love that movie. But I think it's because, and I'm not saying this wrong. I'm not saying this to challenge you, Henry's Rob. I'm scared to be sad. <laughs> I, I am scared to be sad, but I think that sometimes people are fooled by an artistic interpretation of a story. I think something like Skin and Marink. I mean, I'd rather puke on my own shit than watch Spin- Skin of Rank it And we have friends it. that made it, and I'm sorry. I love that you I made don't know a film. Them personally. And, here's the thing, and I like Skrunk. I liked it. I like Skin of Rank. Fucking come at me, bros. Skin of I know Rank. why you hate it. Skin of Rank liked it. was the I've movie had equivalent. Fucking, my it, dreams last night were more entertaining. It was the movie equivalent of putting four dice in a paper bag and just they rolling it around. They were trying something. And I think that that. It's I, the I, movie I didn't equivalent. Think they weren't trying anything. I, there was nothing to try. I think both of you just gave up. I think you decided I watched you didn't the entire movie. movie. I've watched it three times. Then why did you watch it three times? Because I needed to prove to myself it was bad. I liked because it. everybody was like, it's brilliant. You don't get it. It's out of focus. I tried to watch it three times. And guess what? I also did it the third time. I did it the way I was quote unquote supposed to do it. I did this exactly. With the you- subtitles on? In a hotel room with the, the this is what they told us to do for Skin and Put it on a laptop, put a cover over you and the laptop, and watch it in total darkness like a well, child. Who's, who's who's told you this? I read about who's this on the fucking you? internet. Not is that you to do the this. only way a movie is good? No. It's not a good movie. Uh, Eddie, exactly. You don't need to yell at me. Yes. I'm I, just I, mad. People talk about Skinny Rick. I yell. He's you get so mad. He's all full really of it. Really trash. Getting He's scrunk. Really... Getting scrunk. Good people. Also, they did the dedicated to before the movie even started. It's because they had to get it out because they knew people would leave. Yes. But then, did you guys see Immaculate? But otherwise, but I did, did like you see it. Immaculate. No, I didn't. I want to see it. The okay, so this is boobies, another booby booby. So okay, so big verdict. So number one, In a Violent Nature is the good version of a ghost story, according to here last podcast on the left. The with, good version of a ghost story. That's what we're saying. It's, it's Friday the Thirteenth. It's good art horror. Good it's art a good horror. Art There's horror. no slasher in Ghost Story. But it's a horror film because there's a ghost in it. Ghost story isn't a horror movie. (laughs) It's a ghost story. It's a love story. But it's a ghost story. I like that Henry's pointing at me as if I'm on board with this, but I've not seen Ghost Story. How do you feel about what lies beneath? Is that a horror movie or is it a thriller? Thriller. Definitely a thriller. Yeah, there's a a ghost in it. So go fuck yourself. I would say it's a thriller cusp horror (laughs) or ghost story. It is definitely a ghost. I think that ghost stories can be in the middle in between of thrillers and horrors. Is Ghostbusters a horror movie? It's a comedy. Yeah, that's right. It's a horror comedy. It's a comedy with horror elements. 
I guess so. But the reason why the original Ghostbusters work so well is because it's told straight. The whole point is that they it's are... It's better than them gay Ghostbusters because I watch that at night. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I wish they were sucking and fucking. God, I'd love it. But yeah. at least they do the work because Dan Aykroyd knows all of the actual paranormal concepts and wrote it from the perspective of... It's more of a play on blue-collar workers. Like, if you re-watch Ghostbusters and understand, it's making fun of this concept of blue-collar workers in an intellectual space yeah. trying to nail this and then handling something that's way beyond them, you mm. know, which I love. I love that movie. That's why I like that movie. So we, if so but for summer twenty twenty four films is though it's more it's like a Jason or a Michael yes, Myers. Yes, it's an but it's an arty version of it. It's a new. I guess retelling. so. The dialogue was still stupid. Yes, but, but that they was did the it point on, of it. It's a yeah. play up of it. Yeah, in there's I, plenty in of people view. smoking weed. There's no boobies though. No, which also again it was like oh, what a waste. But the kills we're doing were a slasher. Delightful. That's the thing. So in a violent nature, great kills. Where's the tits? I think that we've grown past tits in horror movies. I That's haven't. not true. That's not true. There are boobies other places. Again, immaculate. I, I can't I'm bringing remember up immaculate. Oh, immaculate again. had boobies? Well, it doesn't no. show. No, well, it's got Sydney yeah, Sweeney. Sydney I Sweeney. just, all I see is her boobies. She's That's, chesty, but she doesn't show them. No, she doesn't show them, but honestly, real sexy because she's still like a wet nun she's in a, a lot wet of scenes. God, so see, you're that's seeing, awesome. That's when Babo, Babo, you see them like the big old nasties wet underneath her and nuns. Yeah. I am not out. saying anything about this movie other than the fact that it's the only film we'll talk about today in which the ending moments make Made up for the, the rest of the film. Movie. Yes. It makes really? the entire movie. See, that's my problem with horror movies in general, including Long Legs, is the, is the endings, endings yes. are I usually went, horrible. I went to go see it again after watching the first time because the entire time I was like, oh, I thought this was going to be good and I don't really well, like it as much. She's one of those. Because she's... She's real easy to look at. Right? Oh, she's a she's very, but she, she's got nothing going, going on. on. No, really, she's, got, she's you know, I don't know much about her. I just know that she's incredibly popular and has big boobs. All I know is, I is mean, that that's what you need to know. In terms of like the idea of sexuality driving performances, I went to go see what was that Kristen Stewart? I saw that movie, The Love Lies Bleeding. Was that yeah, good? Yeah, yes. It looks that, awesome. Yes, 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 well, yes. So that's the thing, right? I watched that movie, and I was like, this movie is liquid evil sex. Woo! I love everything but about this movie. it's a crime thriller. Yes. Yeah, but, but it I, made me start working out. Like, but, I, watching that movie got me so turned on that I was really? like, should we all be working out? But there was something about it where it's like, see, this is sexy. So why is this sexy? But then you have big boobied, wet ass nun Sydney Sweeney talking like a parrot to a bunch of people. And I was like, this is actually, this is not sensual. I do not find this sensual. She's supposed she's, to be playing this. She but she's a nun. Yeah, she's a nun. No, yeah, I thought it was sexual. I, I was, always think I it's funny, too, when they have ladies like that play nuns. I know. It's like, you oh, know, she like, shouldn't. They like, even say it right up top. There he goes, you're too pretty to be a nun. And because and they like, have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah they because have she's to way say too it. hot to be a nun. Yeah, and then she's talking Someone's to Someone's gonna some, try and fuck you. And she's talking to some other homely, quote unquote, the homely nun that's another supermodel. Just so hot. Like, all these women have shaved legs, shaved armpits, shaved you know, like definitely not walking around with a Tom Selleck mustache, definitely not Woo. covered in muck from pulling water out of a bullshit ravine. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's all nuns are. They're big, musty, gross, like mop women. Oh, and yeah. meanwhile, it's like it's all just played by models. That's what always takes me out. And that's kind of what I like. That's what I admire about Russell Crowe and his wow. last two Exorcist wow. films. Are they related to each other or are no. they separate? They are not only not related. <laughs> The Pope's Exorcist and The Exorcist Oof. can both be exorcism. The exorcism yes. can both be entirely skipped. One yes. is him playing. Also, the, the last Exorcist movie could be entirely skipped. Entirely skipped. I, these guys are like, but these two guys are fucking so funny. Russell Crowe playing the Pope's Exorcist, super cool ultimate pe exorcist of all exorcists. Then he's in the exorcism. He's playing a dumpy actor playing an playing exorcist in a film. Oh, okay. And it's just so funny to watch him try to play dumpy actor Russell Crowe. Because he's just playing himself. It's just Russell Crowe. <laughs> and you have to you see these scenes with him trying to rehearse his lines. Yeah. Where being like, 
out, damn you. Out, demon. You will listen to me. Meanwhile, he's doing the same exact lines, but for serious in the Pope's Exorcist, and he's bad at both. I even went to go see Madame Webb in the movie theater, and I still chose to not see either the Pope's Exorcist or the Exorcist. I completely Is the Exorcist more out? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's on VOD. Oh, yeah. I completed <laughs> oh, yeah. more of Madame Webb than I did both the Pope's Exorcist and, and the Exorcism. I unfortunately, though, I was, I, we are sort of like, we are biased in our home because Natalie is not a Russell Crowe fan. So I Ooh. am a Russell Crowe fan. I so like, I, oh, man, did you see Unhinged? No, it's supposed to be good. It's though, really right? good. Yeah. See, he's it's like, really good. He does the Nick Cage thing where he'll do like he's scary, one good and movie. He's big. Yeah, he's, and he ain't. Getting any smaller? Man. No. And then he unhinged, it. he's like they like they had him put on weight, I or think, he did. They didn't make him lose any. Well, he, I, I, he came yeah, forward yeah, in yeah. an interview. Did you not hear this? He came forward yeah. in an interview, being like, "I'm done taking care of myself." Yeah, he's literally just done with it. That's great. Just, I was like, "All right, as yeah. long as you're all, he he's just it. like, you know? like, I'm not getting fit for these shits anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm playing yeah. fat characters or characters that you're just gonna have to not act like I'm I'm too large for this." He was like, "What's this? What's because he did um." My favorite was the scores. Oh, when he did the Sorcerer's Apprentice. No, that was Nick Cage. That was Nick Cage. Mm. He How was, was all, that? I never watched that. It's a. It's very funny. Yeah, because it's Nick Cage. I know Disney is like trying to pretend like it doesn't exist. Nick Cage just a little too out of shape to mm-hmm. be playing a man who kills evil sorcerers for a living. Mm-hmm. And it's very funny God. because it's him in a wig. And, and and tight. He makes armor look tight. <laughs> the both of them do the same thing in these films. And like that's why I like but I, I like it. It's like he's decided he's doing this thing, but it it is limiting his range as an actor, I think, in a way. I don't think he cares anymore. No. No, no, no. no. But he was care. upset when they asked him about Gladiator 2, and he's just like, I'm never gonna talk about this movie. Because obviously, look at him. He wasn't asked to be a part of Gladiator no, 2. He's he's dead. Dead. That's the thing! <laughs> but I guess they expected him. I, I'm going to assume he flashbacks. wanted to do flashbacks. But again, that is not. He could never How go could back to being Maximus. You're never going to be Maximus ever again. You bro. died Sorry. when you were at your hottest. Yes, you are not going to be looking like a younger version of Maximus. Sorry, yeah. bro. Also, Gladiator 2 is everyone's dead. Everybody's dead, yeah. What's yeah, the point of that fucking movie? I don't know. I think Years it takes place. Years later. Play, isn't the guy playing Zap? What do you mean? From the American Gladiators? <laughs> oh, see, that'd be fun. See, that would be fun. Yeah. yeah. If it turns out Zap was the great, 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 great grandson of Maximus. Put him on a rhinosaurus. All right, so we're saying Long Legs, watch it. Yes, Long Legs was really fun. Violent Nature, watch it. Really fun. I watched Abigail last night. Have you guys seen that? I really fun. I view that as a horror action film. Yes. Yes, yeah. It was definitely, they stole a lot from like From Dust Till Dawn and like Bordello of Blood. It's probably doing that. Demon Knight. It's very similar to those movies. They even make jokes in it that like they are taking from other vampire franchises. Can I ask though? I thought it was trash. It, it, I what? Abigail. I thought it's it was a popcorn film. It's fun. It's a I thought it was going to be cooler than it was. It looked the trailer was great. Can I ask? At what did one you like point, about it? But like, hey, I, listen, th- that was stupid. But in the beginning, but I asked. Yeah, it's supposed to be stupid. I'm asking a question mm-hmm. to both of you. Okay, correct. Me. I made Jackie upset. Now, <laughs> how do we feel? About this constant need to be meta. Like this idea that each one of these films we've even brought up has had a knowing wink to the genre that they're in. And it's like at some point, when will the knowing winks be run out? Like well, Deadpool, Deadpool kind of ruined it. Well, Deadpool and Wolverine, but wasn't that sort of I haven't seen it yet, but isn't that like Apparently we're saying that's nothing in about the it. comments too? In the, com- the point, in the comics. Right. Yeah. It, isn't that the point? Yeah, it's Deadpool very meta, yes. is meta, but isn't the point of Deadpool and Wolverine like he's making fun of every single part of the Marvel yes. lexicon, right? Yeah. Yes. Which is awesome, but where do we go from here? Like, can every single movie constantly just be a commentary on the quote-unquote genre of the movie that it's in? But I, I mean, think that's why there are other movies that are trying to flip the script, and they uh, that's why I only like movies that are trying something new and different. I don't Which is so like hard to do, because yeah. movies have been happening for exactly. 150 years. Which is why you think of Skrunk, you think of Skinnamarink, and why so many people hate it, and I understand why you Stink do. Marink. But it is it. But it was trying something. 
something and there's going to be a lot of flops they in the literally could something. have just like put the camera in a room and walked away and that would have been the whole movie well the thing is is that it's about how you <laughs> pitch it right so yeah. i view like i'm gonna shoot the corner of the room and then nothing's gonna happen well, and then the ever, phone's gonna ring you ever seen cassavetes any cassavetes films those are but there's a plot well there's also, faces there's dialogue at the time period too <laughs> it was like, a play <laughs> upon genre and it was a play upon movie making on the whole and trying to create this sort of like hole in the wall fly in the wall sort of characteristic like especially like in the killing of a chinese book yeah movie, and a couple of things where you're supposed to sort of like that's the artful way of doing it. Like there's an artful way and an intentional way of doing certain things that if you're constantly searching for novelty, you're eventually going to lose the aspect. I feel like on some level, if you're constantly being like, what's new, what's new, what's new, But there's new? always new stories to be told. I just went to go see Oddity and I knew nothing about it? Oddity. I went in completely blind, didn't even see a trailer for it and I loved it. It nice. was definitely, but here's the thing. It had the sprinklings of stories that, of course, horror movies that we are all familiar with, but it was doing it in its own way. And I liked Which one is this did. film? Oddity is the person that made uh, Caveat. I forget. Oh, it, I the, liked the Caveat. Name. A psychic it, medium attempts to uncover the truth behind her sister's murder at the site of the crime. Damien McCarthy. So it is, it's just a creep. It's got a lot of creepy imagery, a part of it. And again, not like... Like retelling the game, but it was something that at least I saw that hit me and had good jump scares and creeped me out in ways that I wasn't expecting. His other movie is Caveat. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah it's pretty good. Yeah. But all I knew is that he's an indie horror dude, and yeah. I, I knew well, that's that where I independent film caveat. is fucking crushing it. Yes, right now. Oddity was great. It creeped me the hell out. I think now is the time. I think people don't. No, a hundred percent. But we are. I think my. I'm calling it is we are entering another golden age of independent horror. Oh, oh well, it yeah, I think in the oh, 70s that happened in the 90s, and it's just like it's because of everything that happened with the strikes and yes. like and like the studios aren't making shit anymore, and so this Cheaper independent stuff. films are going to start coming in, well, and that always leans on horror. Right now, we are seeing a massive like change in the direction of a lot of these production companies. And I think that we're going to see, it's going to be, it's going to get worse before it gets better. But I think that we did just come, we already kind of came through a big golden age in the 2010s of independent horror. That's where hereditary came from. It follows like that, that, that first wave of that like new, 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 like art house horror. And I think that we're watching it play out because we're watching it now start to get the attention of the main line of Hollywood, yeah. which um, to be honest, right now, we shouldn't trust them because they've been fucking it all up. Uh, and I don't oh, know yeah. whether or not they are going to. I, I don't know if we're going to. I think that we're seeing That's in 20, the 2030s I saw the TV. It's going to be like the 1970s again. You know what I mean? Right now, we're watching. We're in the middle of a really shitty correction period. While we're going to see a bunch more massive failures, while slowly but surely, because like we're not fully back as an independent cinema world until we've got popular independent dramas, independent comedies, and independent other films outside of just horror. Horror is yeah. like a great way to make money but like right now it has to be across the board we got to take a 250 dollar movie 250 million dollar movie and we got to figure out how to how do we break that back up into 20 fucking 25 million dollar movies yeah. that's what it should be well also a lot of these movies everyone complains about running time and then every movie we go see that's 300 million dollars is two and a half hours minimum because they feel forced to make them that long because of how much money, money it that takes to make spending them. on them. The thing with Indiana Jones, the most recent Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones Five, um, I thought it was fine. It's fine, and but if you would have just, it was three hours long, pretty much. If you would have taken an hour out of that movie, much better film. Everybody would have yeah. loved it more. Yeah. You would have saved a hundred million dollars theoretically if it's three hundred million dollars to make. Yep. And like, so what are they fucking doing? It's because it's. Egos, buddy. It doesn't need to be that long. That's just how this is. Bo is no. Afraid needed to be that long. I loved Bo is Afraid. Bo is afraid. I could have watched so three more hours of it. God, yeah. so good. I love Bo is Afraid. Um, did you see A Quiet Place Day 1? I did. <laughs> yeah. It was fine. It's it fine. was, no, it wasn't fine. Well, it was, it's just, hey, let's get to- It was pretty to, bad, you're right. Hey, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It was a fine nice. or a right, cool, because it was I, that one I didn't I did see. ads for it, so I had to say it was Oh, God. Yes, please, yeah, so we do have to say it was fine. Oh, I'm sorry, it was great. Live from your grave. 
Um, <laughs> I saw the TV glow is the one, the uh, the other indie one that I oh, wanted to bring good? up. Manny, our friend, worked on all the visual aspects. Really, oh, really? enjoyed it. It was a very interesting film. I saw the TV glow from the creator of We're All Going to the World's Fair, which another which one, also very good. It was also one of those ones that I expected it to be. Like, I don't know if I necessarily loved We're All Going to the World's Fair, but I liked that it was like, all right, well, it's certainly something different it was that something, I hadn't seen. It was very, very something same different. with I Saw the TV Glow, where it, it is, it's, it's surreal. It's a new it's thing. Cerebral. Okay. It's cerebral. It's a, it's like a different kind of horror. Yes, I liked it. It's a, it's very atmospheric. It is I very, like very neons. interesting. It's a lot of, you know, we're getting practical effects back in a big way. Yeah. Um, other two movies I think to look out for this year was again with stop motion yes. because of that. That how, looks very cool. Dude, yes. it's fucked up. It's so fucked up. And I, the other. What is that? Yeah, stop motion animation. And the other one, Jackie, that I sent to you and I mm. forgot to mention up top, but you mu- is a Beetlejuice, must watch. Beetlejuice? No. Oh, we'll get there. We'll get to Beetlejuice. I haven't seen it. We, well, I'm waiting on Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice to see it. Yes. I mean, oh, I'm see going it. to see it. it already ha- unfortunately, see it. as an elder millennial, it has my money already. Yeah. And so I'm going to go see it, even though I'm, I'm so afraid. Like, I'm literally going to, like, I'm going to eat three beta blockers <laughs> before going <laughs> yeah. to see it. I'm just going to try to feel nothing. Choice I'm just going to try to feel nothing while watching it so that I don't feel the negative energies that I might feel. So that's what I'm going to try. I'm going to try to protect myself against my own. Just, just watching it, I'm going to protect myself. Because it, it doesn't... It's not looking great. you got to give yourself over. you got to open up your heart, it Henry. Looks fine. But the movie to see is The Devil's Bath. You're bringing up Devil's Bath, baby. The Devil's Bath, Devil's I Bath. think, is the sneaker. Yeah. I don't it's, know this one. It's atmospheric. It's fucked. It's folk horror. I think it's. it depends on... I feel like if you love Hagazusa... If you lo- you're gonna you- love the devil's bath. Such and a funny I idea. I understand. Like if, for the lovers of Hagazusa. Because uh, I love Hagazusa. Both of us love Hagazusa. Oh, it's a foreign film. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. That's always a good sign. Set in 1750. You but, know it's a good year, babes. But it goes a, it goes real. I honestly, I love it. It goes. Give, it, it, give it's the pitch made. of what it's about. When you pitched it to me, I was just like, oh, I am there. Explaining to me about like just the idea of back in the day that they would it, like. Obviously, everybody's life was horrible, but you couldn't kill yourself because then you'd be you'd damned go, to hell. You'd be damned to hell. Mm-hmm. So they would have this roundabout way of getting of killing themselves by committing an atrocious act and then going to the sheriff and saying, "I did this. And put they, me to death." And they kill you on the spot. And they'll, but they will absolve you of your guilt That's what before it is. they put you to execution. Oh. So you will still go to heaven. So it's like a roundabout way of killing yourself. So that's, it's, why, that's why the um, the Protestants never trust the Catholics. Because they can just go to confession and, and, get, then, on and then get on out. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Done. <laughs> but the this story is really interesting because it's both a horror film, because there's a there is horror in it, and there's horror somewhat vaguely supernatural elements, but it's also an old timey true crime story because it's about this concept of this this type of it seems like suicide. more of a drama yeah, than, it, a, it is. than a horror. But there's like but it plays into this idea of what's wrong with this woman and it's mostly just man you know what's scary what happens inside the uterus yeah man you know I mean? like, being a not, woman is scary that's yeah. what's scary oh, especially 1750 I mean, not was, a lot of ladies were having a good time it's definitely in the realm of the witch so it is yeah. and midsummer which okay. is great I'm in the, for that but the devil's bath is great and it's lo- it's slow paced you're gonna Ooh. love it Eddie it Ooh. is exactly what you like you know what I liked about um, midsummer and uh, uh, most violent uh, in a violent nature uh, all the daytime killings love the daytime yes. killings yes. Love, the da- uh, yeah. love of the daytime show. Yes. Um, I feel like, I'm trying to think, is there any Maxine, other Maxine, we all saw it together. We loved it. I liked it a yeah. lot. We loved it. As I, time goes on, I like it more and more. Yes. Same. It was super silly, for yes. sure, but in the ending was like, jump the shark. And well, it went more, it went thriller. Yeah, but I but I enjoyed the fucking hell out of it. Yeah. It, I found Maxine to be really, really interesting because Ty West is, I love him as a director. I think that Pearl was art, like truly one of his biggest artistic successes of all time. That was my least favorite of the three. Well, I can, I can understand, but as a person who's just like in Jackie's realm of the mm-hmm. anything but bore me, I was like, 
that's something new. It's something I've new. I've never seen exactly. a story before like this, and it was interesting. Maxine shows Ty West puts on his Brian De Palma hat mm-hmm. and tries to make a Brian De Palma film, but it kind of shows just how good Brian De Palma was. Like yeah. that, Maxine actually just made me want to go back and watch a bunch more Brian De Palma, like, which I do, and I loved uh, Maxine for that. But you guys, if you haven't checked out, like... There's a couple. The, there was one that I was the Fury. The Fury is a very, very interesting film I don't uh, know that he did. The Fury is a psychic movie. It's a psychic thriller that Brian De Palma did from back in the day. Oh, cool! This Ooh. with um, uh, Kirk Douglas. Ooh! And he does that. Hey, you tell me you get your hands away from my daughter. Ooh. Like I love, I love Kirk Douglas. He okay. also did Raising Cain. I love which Raising Cain. Raising Cain is Brian a movie. Brian De Palma's great. Yeah. Oh yeah. Casualties of War. You know. I mean, Scarface. And have you ever seen Sisters? Sisters, no. Sisters is weird. Yeah, I've seen Sisters Brothers, which I really like. It's a western. Yeah, we're right here, Eddie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and also, Dressed to Kill, one of the most interesting thrillers of all time. Oh, yes. Um, what do you guys think about Alien Romulus? Are you excited or not? Yes. Very excited. The reason why sci-fi I'm a- or horror. Sci-fi, sci-fi horror. horror. Sci-fi horror. Sci-fi horror. But also, this one is supposed to be, at least what they're saying, is that like they were shooting for as close to the original. Like, That's the, what it looks like. The feel of the original. It's going horror. They're shooting yeah. for horror. Yeah. The first one is definitely horror, and it goes more sci-fi as the... To me, Alien Just is, watching that alien thing fuck that guy's throat every time it defeated. Every, every time. time. Squirming. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I cannot. Sticking yes. this weird dick thing. I it also, so, like, a, again, like... Like, well, and I, but well, I do wish there be less franchise reboots. But hey, if you're gonna, alien, if, I, the, the I'll Xenomorph watch is them. nothing cooler. No, I love it, and I also, I'll watch all thing. I've watched every one of the AVPs. I love. I, them. Saw, I didn't see the second AVP. It's all right. You know, it's fun. Those are my like. I give a lot of allowances to those movies because I just uh, I go for fun. I'm I just get that. mad there was humans in it. Yeah, it's like we've, but you and I have always talked about this about how yeah. the idea of an AVP with no humans, no is ex- dialogue, that is exactly what we need. One yeah, day. yeah. Well, I also uh, you you don't want the reboot kind of thing, but I will say the first Omen actually surprised me you this like year. This. I liked it more. I will. Say, I'll go it out like. The Omen franchise, not my favorite franchise. Yeah, the first right. one's cool. The first I like the one's very, very, very good. The yeah. very, the very first, first very one is a classic piece of horror cinema. Mm-hmm. Yes, but the first Omen, I definitely went into it thinking like, oh, it's just going to be just shit. And the fact that I actually enjoyed it, it was... was I forgot it in the it first was, Omen. Right? It was better than I thought it was going to be. The first Omen is not bad. Do I have to rewatch the original no, Omen? Because no. it's been like... 25 years. No, no, they flashback. There's like one scene of Gregory Peck in a, in a weird thing where they go like, hey, who are That's it. <laughs> That's it. He Conan goes up to it. It doesn't necessarily make sense because of the plot of the no, original. It does not, no, it doesn't. Don't think about it too hard. Don't okay. think about it. Did Just, you all do Watchers? I have. Yes. I have. Yeah. Well, I want to say the reason why I'm like, let's be gentle on Watchers because I feel bad when it's There's a young, more, right? It's a new young director. I know it's M. Night Shyamalan's M. Daughter, daughter, so, so it, it's a nepo so baby situation from the worst dude. See, I, I, I mean, I've already a, got my tickets for Trap. So oh, me too. God. I'm an M. Night Shyamalan apologist. Apologist. Yeah. I'm an apologist. Yeah, I'm an apologist. I think that I know his, it's bad. I know it's bad. And at when he's he's just the one of the single most hit or miss creators for me of all time. Because I love The Visit. I love the old. Trash. I love The Visit old. was awful. The, the old, I mean, I refuse old. to watch. I yeah. The Visit it. was like one of the last times I was like, I, he's not going to get me again. Because that movie was so bad, I was like rooting for the old people. Well, so I was all the yes, children to die. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm always rooting that's for the old people. That's why we liked I it. I always yeah. root for the bad guy. It's my favorite. Fuck the bleeds. Fuck oh, them. Yeah, come man. on. Yeah, man. But the Watchers really, like, I thought, though, that maybe, I was like, I was hoping that, all right, M. Night Shyamalan's daughter, maybe she'll go completely in a different aspect. Like, she's going to try something completely new. I think he made most of that movie. Probably. He oh, yeah. definitely made it. But I mean, I mean I don't, it seems like it's. How, is the dialogue awful? Because oh then he God. made it. That's so... M. I. Shyamalan is not great with the dialogue. No, he's awful at it. The main issue is that he, he's like, they are writing it. It's all done by it? his production company. Wait, what was the name of the DJ in. Um... And old, old. Oh, it's like, uh, like was it DJ Honda Semi Civic or something? Yeah, yeah I forget what it was. DJ, what was his name? 
Uh, mid size gonna... sedan. Mid size sedan. That was his name. His name was mid size sedan. I loved old then, man. Oh, old. Go, we would yell old at the screen we every were, time. Were Jackie and I went to cut yeah. We were all lit up. Old. I'm literally going. They're getting old. <laughs> man, glass was so bad. I was glass. so oh, mad God. that I, he got me on. But I love Split. Split was yeah. fucking garbage. Was, I, I, loved I loved Split. It. Split I loved was it. Thir- the Cloverfield Lane was the better version of. Split. Loved Cloverfield Love Lane. Cloverfield Lane. Yeah, that movie was great. Split was shit. Sixth Sense probably sucks if you go back and watch it. No, it does. actually, it, it's not as bad as you would expect it to be because I went back and rewatched it a cool. couple of years ago. I am excited to go see Trap, though. I'm I'm looking forward oh, yeah, buddy. because I watched the trailer for it. And I get I was drunk so and ready in. for everyone. Dude. I don't care. There's something about his movies. Like I don't mind it if I, how do I put this? I know you're almost wasting my time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I know that this is... I'm not Shyamalan. You know what it is, honestly? It's what I know about the man. The man makes movies because he is obsessed with making movies. And he puts up his own money for all of his films so that nobody can tell him what to do yeah. with any of his movies. Yes. Does he... Oh, it's Josh he, Hartnett. It's Sha- oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I recognize him. Oh, yeah, he's back now. He's, he's like still, a man now. He's pulling Oh, it's like a hard the, renaissance. It's ha- ever since Oppenheimer. He's a much better actor now, too. He is. Yeah. He's a much better actor now. He but is. the there's something about these movies when I go... Sudden death, kind of. Yeah. Like, I know that it's not great, but it's like, just just don't lie to me about it. I like watching M. Night Shyamalan put his heart and soul in these movies. I do. Do I believe he might need somebody to probably go help him edit? Edit. He needs an editor. But he needs somebody to edit. But hey, man. A dialogue. Someone who does dialogue. That man's living the fucking dream. And that's what I like about with that. Well, it's a highly stressful life that he leads. I appreciate the fact that he doesn't have have to fuck him. There's no notes he's got to take. There's no final edit. He yeah, but how else do you feel now that he's so? His daughter did Watchers, and then his other daughter is the the, the pop star yeah. lead in Trap. So uh, Eddie, I don't know if you're familiar with what it's about, but it's like Josh Hartnett takes his daughter essentially to a Taylor Swift concert. Yeah. There's a killer at the concert in the he trailer. Is the killer. He's the killer. Yes, but the pop star is M. Night Shyamalan's daughter, Mm -hmm. and she wrote an entire album of music to debut in this movie. Well, that's kind of cool. I... It, you it know, kind it's of just makes me a like lot. him and I chop a lot even more. I think it's cute. I think it's But cute. you hate Nepo Babies. I don't hate Nepo Babies. Oh, okay. I thought you did. Henry no. hates Nepo Babies. I'm I think it's great. I think that Nepo Babies are just... They're just You're weird. obsessed with Bronny James. Bronny I'm obsessed with because of the what they're... The way they are changing the entire rules of basketball <laughs> to put him on a team to play probably half a season with his father and I'm going to try to go get a ticket to go see which is going to be like fucking so 15 2000 yeah he got yeah they got me I'm obsessed with this storyline but it's also more so like Nepo Babies in, in the entertainment industry I like Nepo Babies I, they're, personally they're I feel fine. like they're well trained they have to sometimes yes it depends on the Nepo Baby it depends on what they're doing it depends, depends on what they're on how doing how hard they're working see like Bronny James is obviously not ready to be on the Lakers and in basketball it's easy to tell if you're not ready that's true because you're not Scoring points. I'm ready. Put me in. I dribble it. And yeah. I go, she dribbled. I dribble. She dribbled him in here. That's why she brought her them. fucking her. Each seriously, he's very small. But it's like that's why <laughs> I'm fascinated because it's like essentially like it's mar- somebody Marcus's size playing basketball. Yeah. That he's just they've sort of allowed. Ah. The, the um going back to trap. There's a, I love the the. Like the suspense movies that take place in the in arenas. Yes. Oh yeah. And you can't like get out of the arena. You yes. know, and there's always that. There was a movie that came out. It was a it was a underground, not underground, but just a, a, a straight to video uh, action film called Final Score. Okay. That, that is that. It came out like six or seven years ago, starring Dave Batista, who's like my favorite. I love Dave I Batista. Love Dave yeah, Batista. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, and he has to like find. There's a soccer match, and they have he has to find the people who are trying to kill everyone at the soccer match. Ooh, and it's a lot of fun. That's 69%. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'll watch that. Um, I think we've done it. Oh, um, before we go. Oh yes. How good does Nosferatu look? Oh, oh my fuck. god! It looks like yeah. my fuck favorite me. movie. Dude, like before it even comes out. Way. God. And like, <laughs> has I, he <laughs> fucked up yet? 
not one time my, yet? Not in my opinion. What else has he done? I'm actually the even Northman down- was great. My bachelor party, remember? I love Northman. Northman. I actually Northman. felt like the Northman got a bunch of hate for some reason. I thought it was fucking awesome. I loved the Northman. Yeah, Northman was great. Name? How do you feel about I? I was talking with someone else about Lily Rose Depp in Nosferatu. Now, she's perfect as a skinny. I think that she is because she's Mina, or I don't know if, if she it looks is Mina, great as like, Mina. I, yeah. I feel like she's got the face. To be like from in a, a different time in a traditional yeah. horror in a traditional vampire story. If they it looks like they're doing it this way, you want someone that looks sort of like a fainting, like it's not mean or anything. Like Ellen, a l- Lily, you know what I mean? Mm. Like she needs you need something that's a uh, because it's not Nosferatu is the original story that Dracula stole. So essentially, like Nosferatu came out before, like it's this whole thing. Nosferatu yeah. was based on the OG. Like all things. Yeah, yeah, and I also love that Willem Dafoe is in it because yeah. he played Nosferatu and uh, was it a oh, which another great oh, movie. Yes. Shadow of a Vampire, Shadow of a Vampire, Vampire. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 which was great. But yeah, no, know who else is in Nosferatu? Who has been one of my favorite guys lately is Aaron Taylor Johnson, the kid from Kick Ass. Oh yeah. yeah, he's been doing really good. He is. He's a great actor. Yeah, he's been doing really good. I really enjoy him. And if I want. If I could throw a shout out to a non horror movie to make sure everyone watches it as it comes out, I've told both of you to go see it. Kill yes. is, yeah. is probably the best action movie of the last decade. Can't wait. Can't it's wait to see it. Unbelievable. I can't wait to see it. So we already got, honestly, while we did talk a lot of mess, it's Indian, not Korean. It's, I'm really excited to see this. Well, we did talk a lot of mess. I will say, I think that in the end, we're going to show you all, right? Spend your money in the movie theater. Please go to the movie go theater. To go the to the movie, movie theater. theater. Get a Stubbs account. It doesn't cost that much. It's twenty three ninety nine a month. You can see up to three movies a week. We don't. I know yet. We have nothing to do with Stubbs. No, we have I wish. To do with AMC. They're not giving us. I have any stock money. in AMC and it's doing horrible. He's doing terrible because it's <laughs> such a good deal. Because it's literally such a and good that, deal. Don't tell them it's such a good deal because I'm so worried they're going to take Stubbs away. I, I pay, don't know what no, I will tell I you. I see every not. movie for free. There's so many people who just have it and don't go. That's where they make their money. Yes. And, they, and we all go, we all go and buy like a thirty dollar beer, and so they're fine. Oh yeah. They don't care. They just want us in the door. I'm just saying that it's. It, People work on these movies, and they try really hard. And without you going to see them in the theaters until we figure out a way to properly show how you count the way people watch these things, because that's what they're all te- that's what all these production companies are doing. They're all fighting over how they decide they want to count how many people watch these things on the internet. Netflix got its own numbers. Amazon has its own numbers. Apple has its own numbers, and they just make it up. They don't tell you. So the way we can directly help these people that are making movies is by spending the money in the theater to go see it. And yeah. so if you want, if you if you like movies, and I know that this is, there's a lot of people, like obviously this is not for people that don't like, you know, d- big groups or whatever fucking bullshit. I get it. But it's like if you if you like them, go out and see these movies. Yeah, put put money in the hands of people that make the stuff that like what you like. I went and saw Sound of Freedom three times last year. He loved it. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. They're even showing the Olympics at the movie theater. Which I think right is now. really cool. It's so smart. Oh, I would yeah. love to see huge Olympics. I absolutely. So go see in a violent nature, go see long legs, go see Violent Nature I had to buy on Apple. I did the same. I went and bought because now it's not in theaters anymore. But Devil's Bath, you can definitely see stream. the Devil's Bath. Get shutter. Nosferatu, your bring your parents to go see Nosferatu this Christmas and scare the shit out of your mother. Yes, and also horror movies, Shudder. It is, what is it? Five ninety nine, six ninety nine a also, month. I don't do it. I should, I should hook up. Oh, and then our buddy David oh, does God, watch you get late night with the, with the devil. devil. Yeah, watch late night with Dude, the devil. Dude, yes, another one that was like try. It was I had never seen that movie before, mm-hmm. but it was like a the inklings of other stories kind of put into one so it wasn't like whoa 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 what but i loved late night with the devil i gotta see it so and um we just if you go to our patreon uh you can hear an interview with us and the directors of mind body spirit which is also a really great small found footage movie that i absolutely love mind body spirit yeah it's great evil yoga Evil yoga. Ooh, okay. That makes me think of in a violent nature, but yeah. we won't need. We don't need to bring that up. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. Dead, it's good. You got great tales. All right, so go out there. You know, go go love life. Mm-hmm. Right, go live. Uh-huh. Go love, live live every day knowing that there's another horror movie for you to see, and love the fact that you can see it with your family or tell your family to go fuck themselves. You go watch it alone in the garage yeah. or in your car. 
You can bring the laptop out there. You can watch it in your Just car. make sure the garage door is open. And the, the car's car is on. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't do that. And if your pants are baggy enough, you can sneak in a Jersey Mike's. That's the key. Yeah. Or, like our buddies did, our friend Adam Newman, they all went to go see the stupid Gar- Garfield movie and they all brought in lasagna. Yes. You'd be surprised what you could bring into a movie theater. Make it your <laughs> home. They don't stop you. All right. Honestly, it makes and me think of you'll the laugh dude. your way to the bank. Do you, you see the guy that was watching Love Lies Bleeding that people took pictures of him because he yes, had- Yes, the open the, pornography. The opening, open pornography, a bottle of fireball, some joints, and he's passed out with his dick in his hand watching Love Lies Bleeding. I mean, you you got to watch pornography when these beautiful women are up on the screen. And they're you. acting. Yeah, yeah, what is wrong with I you? I didn't. I wouldn't need the porn. That's for damn sure. Well, everyone's different. Mm-hmm. Thank you, guys. Join the Patreon.com slash podcast on the left. You can watch us talk and perform. Go on Twitch.tv slash LPN TV and you can go and see that that is where we do our Twitch streams. If and they, they are can't very good. understand you, it doesn't they matter if you're plugging. They are very good. Go to lastpodcastonthelept.com <laughs> to buy tickets for all our various live shows. And then go to, what else? Page 7. Page 7. Page page seven. seven. Jack, come, is on page 7. Come check out Page 7. It's going to, good put. It's an unbelievable show, it's Page 7. Put. And also, what's going on with, um, with you're done with the Court of Thorn and Roses, right? Yes, but we are starting up with Crescent City Deep Dives. And what is that? So that's that's a be New Orleans? It's another one. It is not has nothing to do with New Orleans. No, really, um, it is. Even no. though it's called Crescent City, Correct. no, it's been a thing in our home. It's Fay. No, it's the world of the Fay. But she it is another it series. It yep, it's another series okay, from great. SJM, and we're really excited about that. And come hang out with us. Yeah, good. Sarah Jessica man. Marker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 All right, fuckers. <laughs> see you in hell. Also, come. I'll see you at the Side Stories show on September 13th we'll in Chicago. Oh, hell yeah. yeah we, need to, we need to plug our show. We'll have do, a great we'll time, do it. Guys. <laughs>